Okay, let's go. Well, WCW Monday Nitro number 179, February 15th, 1999. I kind of feel like we can just sum up Raw by saying, look, Rocket Champion again and Big Show was there now. That's all we need to say about that. Let's just devote the rest of this Paul 90 minutes. Paul White. Let's devote the rest of this 90 minutes to this amazing episode of Nitro. They hadn't come up with a brilliant name for Paul White yet. No. So he was just Paul White. Well, apparently on the on, on the pay-per-view, based on the clips they showed, he was just, he's huge. <laughs> yeah. Well, he is huge. And, he and is. they gave him a shirt that said, no gimmicks needed. I did see that. Yeah. Which is kind of true. Well, it's true. If it's true but... for anyone, it's going to be for the seven-foot guy. That's that's fair, but yeah. giving him some kind of a name would have been nice. It's Paul White. You know what I mean. We'll get to this. Yeah. So Nitro opened. Like, big show. When you think that's about fair. it, that's one of the stupidest names in the history of wrestling. It's not good. His name is Big Show. <laughs> First name Big, last name Show. Exactly. That's what they came up with. Yeah. After many tries. Yeah. It took him a while to get there. Big Show. Well, Nitro opened with a disclaimer. Parts of the show were lost due to technical difficulties. That was actually the best thing on the show. Absolutely. Because it meant the show was shorter. Yeah. I Hour and 56 minutes. Mm -hmm. Whatever they lost was bad. They lost 25 minutes of this show. Shucks. Really? Yep. And one of the things they lost, I wrote it down here, Meng and Barbarian versus Horace and Brian Adams. That apparently went forever. You don't say. So That thank, was the theme of matches on the show. Thank God we missed that. So they joined the announcers mid-intro. They're talking about how Kimberly last week, after she jumped out of a moving car, had suffered a concussion and facial lacerations. I'm going to... I'm gonna, I am going to i wrote exactly... Okay. I wrote all of this down. All right. They cut to the announcers... And Tony Giovanni says in this voice, We have some good news to report. Kimberly suffered facial lacerations, a mild <laughs> concussion, no severe neck damage. Yeah. However, she is convalescing, but we don't know where. That was... This does not sound like good news. <laughs> no. He was so cheerful when he said, Good news! Facial lacerations and a mild concussion. Yes. Man. If he would have phrased it, she didn't die. But I'm happy to report that only... You know what I mean? Or if he would have said, like, there was concern she broke her neck, mm -hmm. but turns out she just got cut on the face a little bit and sure. a mild concussion. No. No, but Brian is the right. The good news was <laughs> severe face, facial lacerations. Right. He seemed and very happy concussion. to hear about her concussion and facial lacerations. Yeah. That's much better than her being okay. And so, I love that she's convalescing, but we don't know where. They're, they're afraid. She of got in a serious car accident, mm -hmm. if you can mm -hmm. call it that. She was assaulted and thrown out of a moving car. Yeah. Or so, she, or so they claim. She's missing. Well, Paige knows where she is. A secret location. They're afraid if they tell Tony, Tony will tell the nation, the I nation see. will tell Scott Steiner, yeah. and he'll continue on his quest to fuck her. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. So the announcers are yapping. The Nitro girls are dancing. Suddenly they cut backstage where Arn Anderson is attacking Disco Inferno and then being handcuffed and taken away. Are there like 14 incidents a week on the show where one wrestler attacks another and is not handcuffed and taken away well you know this was outside the building mm. yeah i see and disco even said it was like mm. public property or something and he wanted the guy arrested here's my question are they building to a match oh who the hell knows they've done a better job building up disco and arn than half the stuff <laughs> you know, Flair, yeah. and, and arn is retired yeah so what's going on here cuts to a camera in the trunk of a limousine which was used for exactly one shot it was Eric Bischoff in his chauffeur's uniform looking into the camera saying something like he's mumbling about flair, whatever. Vinny, yeah. if you're concerned about a camera in the trunk... Oh, there's more. They hired a fucking helicopter. We're going to be here all night, I understand. Yes. Well, apparently two helicopters. True! Yeah. Yeah. Regardless, Flair and his buddies arrive. They harass Bischoff. He has to be the chauffeur. It was very, very heavily edited, so I can only imagine how bad the bad takes were. And they get in the limo, and they drive away. And a clips of Roddy Piper beating Bret Hart for the U.S. title last week. Yep. We had Jerry Flynn versus Saturn. Now, before that, they kept replaying the Steiner-Kimberly Nitro Girls bump, mm -hmm. where, like, Scott grabbed her, and she yanked away and tripped into the horrible schoolgirl. You know how many times they've replayed that? And it's horrible <laughs> it's so bad and they're insistent to just play it over and over again so yes yeah, so we got saturn and jerry flynn so how long did this go who timed it 
I only timed one match in the show. Mm. It was not this one. Everything on the show felt like it went forever. So they're doing this match. The announcers are going over the rest of the show, including the tag team tournament to come later on. And Tony is reading off the matches. And Tanae says, no, that's wrong. You got this guy here, that guy there. This was so stupid. And he says, oh, my bad. There's a typo in my format. I, I'm sorry, everyone. And like three minutes go by, and they get word that, no, Tony's format is correct. Nobody told Tanae what the matches are. And there's an injury replacement or some such bullshit. Then they had to correct their correction. What a fucking clown show this is. Well, since you got all that, Vinny, my question to you is, what's going on in this tournament? Why did Ben Juan Malenko wrestle two times on one show? What kind of tournament is this? Because WCW is so completely incompetent that they cannot book... I mean, I didn't have faith in them to book a single elimination tournament correctly. When they tried to do a double elimination tournament, I knew disaster would unfurl. And here it is. Disaster. But why did they wrestle two times on one show? Because there was... I'm not complaining. I just need to know what kind of tournament this is. Because there were so many... They were doing the finals of the pay-per-view. Okay. And there were so many matches left, they couldn't do one match on Nitro and one match on Thunder and get there. But couldn't you just, like, have two different teams have to do the two matches on Nitro? Why did they have to wrestle twice? Because they had... They, had, they, they never put them on TV, but they had brackets. Huh. And to fill out the brackets, they had to do two matches on the show. And it's not like they couldn't, you know, this is professional wrestling, couldn't make something up and no. say that on a house show yeah. earlier in the week. Well, for happened. God's sake, there's an injury replacement. You can't just say this team is out due to injury. Exactly. There's a hundred things they could have done smarter and better than this, but they're WCW and they suck. Hmm. Expect no better. Now. That's a good match. There was some fun stuff in this match. It went yeah. too long. It was pointless and rambling, but there were some cool moves. I don't even think it was that pointless and rambling. It was actually a pretty good match. The fans are super into it. And the announcers actually, because it was the first match on the show, there really wasn't a lot to talk about because they can't see the Eric Bischoff stuff. Right. That's what we got to remember. Yes. Right. They can't see any of this. But anything that happens around the building... No, here... <laughs> Fuck. If there's a backstage segment, they can't see it. But if a car arrives at the building, mm -hmm. they can see that. Sure. But if the car is away from the building, they can't see it. Right. What? I don't know. Anyway, they had nothing to talk about here, so they spent the entire time talking about the match. Mm -hmm. It was like a good wrestling match on a wrestling show with the announcers calling the action. This was the best thing on the show. So, the match goes on for a long time, and then Scott Dickinson jumps in the apron. This distracts the referee. Chris Jericho runs out with the... I, I guess it was a pipe. Some giant thing big piece of metal he attempts to come off the top rope with it Saturn cuts him off but he turns around Flynn hits a spin kick and makes a cover and the ref counts three with this giant piece of metal in the ring and I know he knew it was there because when he raised Flynn's arm he almost tripped over it but you know it's funny to be fair it was never used I guess that's true. <laughs> it wasn't. But how many times have you complained about someone being in it's the ring? It's stupid yeah. but I'm pointing out it was funny because for once in our lives the weapon in the ring actually wasn't even used. Flynn hit a, rest a legal wrestling maneuver and won. Yes. That is true. Now, After a distraction by two men and, and an attempted use of a foreign object. The Scott Dickinson thing. I mean, it does make sense in the storyline that they're telling, but this storyline sucks. What's this fucking guy doing on the apron in street clothes? I'm so sick of this storyline. Not line. to mention, are we going to get Saturn versus Scott Dickinson? Maybe. I hope not. No part of me wants that. Hey, the Bret Hart Will Sasso match was like the second best match on the show, so true. anything's possible. So Flair and his pals are mumbling in the limo. Who are these guys? I fucking don't know. Mm. Two random weird bad actors. I think they were like uh, WCW executives of some kind. So no, I can't understand what any of them are saying. They're just <laughs> mumbling with themselves. Well, one of them was very excited we were getting Will Sasso versus Bret Hart tonight. Mm -hmm. One of them was very happy that Flair was keeping Eric in check. And then Flair gets a call from the building about Arn and Disco in a brawl, and then they start shaking their heads in disappointment. Yes. It's out of control back at the building. So Flair says he'll be at the building in a half hour. A half hour? <laughs> That's what he said. You're the president. The show's already been going for 20 minutes. You got one show a week you got to really get to, mm. and you're 45 minutes late. He tells Jim to get Arn out of jail. Jim. JJ. Sure. Oh, Dylan. Yeah. Oh, Jim. Jim Morrison. That's that, his real name. That, I, frankly, that made more sense. Yeah. I, I, would, I would have thought of Jim Morrison before Jim Dillon. <laughs> well, that's the JJ. This this scene in the limo, this was a three-camera shoot. 
Yeah, inside a limousine. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Only three? <laughs> there may have been more. There are more cuts on this than any Raw match. Oh, and then, as he's ranting, the car starts to go over a bumpy road. Right. Mm. And the execs are like, have you ever gone this way before, Rick? And Eric says, I took a shortcut. We'll be there in 15 minutes. Had a hair versus mask video package. Then it's back to the limo. Flair is upset Disco was even on the show. Why they pay for his plane ticket. And they're talking about the bumpy road. And Eric says, they got the detour. And I'll get there. And he tells Rick, we'll get to the building in 20 minutes. Then he raises the little uh, divider between the driver and the, and the riffraff. I guess the execs. And he's the riffraff. Anyway, he raises the divider. I'm not in limos a lot. He raises the divider. And he makes a secret phone call. Says, I'll be there in 15 minutes. Juventud Guerrera and Blitzkrieg and Psychosis versus Super Colo and El Dandy and Hector Garza. Dude. So, <laughs> again, in the middle of this match, Shivani says, I have just learned, ladies and gentlemen, that earlier this afternoon, Lex Luger severely beat up Rey Mysterio Jr. Back to action. He just learned. Yeah. They just now thought it was relevant to tell the lead announcer the one star beat up another backstage. Well, I know show. Luchadors, Rey Mysterio, tie in. Uh -huh. I don't know. All I know is during this match, the fans chanted boring. Mm -hmm. This is the match I timed. Oh, please. How long? Uh, 15 plus minutes plus a commercial break. Oh. So close to 20. God. And they were fucking stuff up left and right. Hoovy and Dandy absolutely could not get on the same page. Yeah. There it was the, incredible. It was weird because for a, a long, bad match, there was heat. It just kind of came and went. Yeah. They get excited, and then they get bored, and they sit back down. They get excited again, and they get bored, and they sit back down. It went forever. Well, like, at the beginning, they did Lucha, and the fans chanted boring. Yep. And then the heels did a three-on-one beatdown on one of the baby faces. They cheered. Yes. Then the baby faces did a three-on-one beatdown, and they cheered. Yes. Then they went back to Lucha, and they were just dead quiet. So it goes to commercial, and... It's either, for the first half of this match, it was basically cool dives or fucked up moves, but it was not boring. They go to commercial, and they come back, and there's a head scissors going on. They just lie there. Head scissors? Oh, like on the mat? Yeah. 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 What I noticed about this match was, it's a six-man, and so they got the heat on Hoovy, and then they went to commercial or whatever, and there was a comeback, and then they got the heat on Hoovy again. What? See, by this point, I had already tuned out. I, I was aware there was stuff going on. And going back, I didn't realize at the time, but going back over my notes here, you were right. Hoovy fucked up a lot of shit. Oh, dude. One thing after another, he fucked up Air Hoovy. Now he, That's yeah. his move. <laughs> he's named after him. And you know what's best about that? When he fucked up a move with Dandy, there's two guys. So, like, you know, maybe somebody was on the wrong page. Uh -huh. Air Hoovy is him. Is all him. Yeah. There's no one else involved. No. You run, you jump. Yeah. Well, he fucked it up. So, well, now, that's completely different from Blitzkrieg. Who all his high flying looked really great. It was everything in between that he screwed up. Well, happened yeah. last week too. He did I mean, make a I mean, horrible comeback. He may have been worse this week, but he was much I, worse this yes, week. Yes, much. Okay. So the worst fuck up though, I don't think belonged to either Hooventude or Blitzkrieg. It was super Kolo. He goes up top. Blitzkrieg is, Blitzkrieg is sitting on the top rope, and it, Super Kolo climbs up there for a top rope Rana. So he's standing on the top rope. Next thing I know, he just falls outside on his head to the floor. <laughs> Just a gravity storm struck. He just slipped and fell. He popped him up. Well, it's super close, so that might have been the plan. <laughs> That's all. <also laughs> never true. watched his matches. Maybe even trying to kill himself again. Yes. He popped right up. <laughs> it's funny. He falls from the top rope to the floor, pops up, climbs all the way back up to the top rope to miss a top rope Rana. <laughs> so he just flips over, lands on his belly, and Blitzkrieg hits what I described as a twisty, flippy thing for the finish. It was a Phoenix splash. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, this went forever. And then we were back to POV porn. Dude, we've been in that hotel with her for a week. We, you, the viewer, have spent a week in a solo hotel room with Tori Wilson. Man, oh man. This guy's going to need an IV. I, at least. So she needed more towels and more whipped cream, and she told you to hurry. Huh. Yeah. That's what she said. Well, it ain't Steiner, then. He don't eat that. <laughs> so. A towel? Suddenly... We are, we, the, 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 the television viewer, are aboard a helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> and we can hear it, and we can see it. There is a second helicopter. That is the best part. Yeah. Like, this was pre-taped. You know what I mean? Like, they could have mm -hmm. 
you know. Clearly. They could have edited I mean, out- the idea is they're showing from above what's happening. Mm-hmm. I mean, do we have to be in the helicopter? Do we have to hear the thing going around? <laughs> like, it's just this incessant buzzing yeah. throughout this entire segment. We're hearing the helicopter. Why? They paid for it. They want to make sure you knew it had been paid for. Make sure we knew it wasn't a blimp? I don't know. Were there drones in 1999? I don't think so. No. Not like this. So, all right. So, we're in one helicopter. We see a second helicopter with a spotlight. (laughs) Trust you, wait. Why is there a helicopter with a spotlight? Well, because they were filming outside at night. (laughs) They needed a light from somewhere. I don't know. I understand the helicopter with a spotlight because they went to go film this empty field and said, holy shit, it's dark. Get a spotlight out here right away. I don't know why they needed a second helicopter with a camera on it. Now, what this is all showing is the limo is driving down a dirt road followed by a phalanx of other vehicles. And the NWO, it's clear. Phalanx? Phalanx. It's an actual word. The NWO in masks jumps out they tell Flair Buddies to beat it. It's very clearly the NWO. Where'd they go? Who cares? Ran off into the field? Sure. Maybe they wanted the helicopter. That's the least up. of our problems, by the way. Yeah. So, Hogan's mustache is showing through his ski mask. Yeah. This so is a classic moment. So, Eric, Eric parks the limo. He, Eric also ran away, by the way. He parked the limo and ran, even though his buddies were coming to join Yeah. Him. Fled. So, we watch from a helicopter... As a masked Kevin Nash menaces Flair with a baseball bat, and the other trucks drive in circles around them. Yeah. I'm not making this up. Yeah. This aired on a wrestling show. Yep. Eventually, they swarmed him. There's like eight guys putting the boots to him, and it's all so important and so newsworthy and so critical, they go to commercial in the middle of this gang assault in the middle of a field somewhere. You're not doing justice to this. This was so bad. They had like nine million cameras. It was filmed the day before. It's heavily edited. They've edited not one good camera angle. No. <laughs> like, every shot they have looks so phony. It's just a terrible brawl in the middle of the night with two fucking helicopters flying over and flare falling in the grass. I guess. I guess. Yeah, he, he may have been on his hands and knees on his back. I'm not sure. So they show this absolutely fucking terrible. This had to be. This had to have been the worst thing that we've seen in the entire time we've been reviewing these shows. Fucking gang beating of Ric Flair in the woods. They go back to the announcers. They can't see any of this. They have no, no, they have no idea. And they're like, hey, back for a tag team tournament match. And no, no one tells them. No one from the truck is no. like, guys. Now I have two questions. First off, if you're going to beat somebody unmercifully... In a field. Why would you hire a camera crew? Oh, and then masks. No, so we'll they get, get to that. Right. We'll get okay. to that. Fear and then, not. second off, what was going on in the arena while this beating was taking place? That's a great question. They were just chilling out. They weren't watching this. No. Did, was there a match in the ring? Eh, probably just sitting there. Oh, fun. <laughs> have you ever been to a raw taping? There's a I lot have. of that. Not like this, though. No. One final note before we move on. As we talked about, they had like six different cameras here. And, at least. And I, I least. made fun of you earlier, Brian, for being obsessed with sound quality. But every camera had different sound settings. <laughs> so one was like, all you could hear was the helicopter rotor. One was too muffled. You could hear guys talking, but you couldn't make any voices. One was too loud. You could hear the voices. It was hurting your ears. Just every time they cut cameras, they cut sound quality as well. You couldn't lay down one track with ambient noise and then just like edit everything on top of it. So, this was super expensive. It was very amateurish pr- produced. It was stupid. Was there anything good about this? Nothing. Okay. So, they go to commercial in the, in the middle of the beating. We come back with a disclaimer saying, match is joined in progress due to technical difficulties. It is Fit Finley and Dave Taylor versus Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko in a, as Tony Schiavone said with the glee earlier, the loser's bracket. <laughs> <laughs> You've never seen a man so happy to bring you a bunch of losers. We had, yeah. a lo- we had a loser match on Raw. We have Dean Malenko, Chris Benoit, and Fit Finley. Mm-hmm. And even to a lesser degree, David Taylor. All in a match together, and we get boring chants. I thought it was boring. What did these people want to see? Well, I mean, it wasn't that exciting, but like, they, they, I couldn't they, call it boring. They may also have put it in a bad mood by, as Craig noted, sitting in silence for 10 minutes in an empty yeah. arena. Well, there was that. So they should have been up. excited for wrestling. You know how our worlds collide with today, that they, the 19 years ago? On Raw, yesterday... 
there was a loser match on Raw. The yeah. losers got a second chance. Yeah. Huh. So Ridiculous. they hit Dean with 800 moves in a row, and then the horseman cut Finley off, hit him with 500 moves in a row, and finally they tapped out Taylor with a cloverleaf headbutt combo. Anything to add? No. All no. right. Kidding me. They replayed the Kimberly angle from last week, and the announcers are like, here you see David Crockett calling for help. And I was like, David Crockett? Put him on Nitro. Is he there every week? You have David Crockett around, and you I have to listen to Zabisco and them? Anyway. So they go to break again. They come back. Bobby Heenan has now joined the announce desk in a plain <laughs> black sweater. Mm-hmm. Now, I understand you travel a lot. Bags get lost. Stuff happens. They couldn't have thrown him a Nitro jacket or sweatshirt or something. <laughs> just He's just out there looking like a fan. Right? Craig's got an eye on his shirt. You got a plain blue shirt. I'm not on... Okay, yeah, I'm we on. are! That's my point. I don't care. We're not. Well, making, clearly he didn't either, Vinny, nor I, should he have. I don't know about you, but are you making millions of dollars? Bobby I, I wasn't. Can, I, well, more I, than me. I can confirm Bobby Heenan was making more for Night Show than I am making for the Brian and Vinny show. Well, that's true, yeah. Okay. Anyway. But you have more pride in your work than he did on this show. <laughs> oh, Brian. I have less have pride. Have you listened to his commentary? He has given up. I have less pride and less alcohol on this Bullshit. show. Bullshit. <laughs> he gave up when, when Goldberg got beaten. Well, that's probably true. But this was... So, they're interviewing the Nitro Girls. The, 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 the more this goes on, by the way, I'm trying, I am starting to see your point. Yes. He did not care. So, <laughs> they're like... The Nitro Girls have something to say about Kimberly. And they're all morose and... Can't wait till she comes back. They go to fucking whisper. Yeah. Shawn Michaels' wife. Wife. Yeah. When she was a brunette. She is weeping. Yeah. We love you, Kimberly. Yeah. We can't wait till you're back. Crying. Yeah. How did she pull this out? So they're crying. That Kimberly is badly injured, or as Tony noted, just a minor concussion and serious <laughs> facial <laughs> facial lacerations. And they finish their little speech, tears and everything like that, and Bobby then says, they going to dance? <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> he did. He did say that. Now, it was perfect. <laughs> yeah. It was so awesome. <laughs> because he knew what bullshit this was. Well, it was. And he made it entertaining. <laughs> See, I actually thought their performance, the Nitro Girls' performance, was tremendous. Yeah. I thought this is the best thing on the show. A Nitro Girls promo. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but Whisper in maybe the only speaking role she ever had in her entire wrestling career was better than, I think, every single girl in WWE today. Sure. She was great. Yes. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. How did she cry over this? I don't know. We had clips of the Will Sasso thing from last week. Maybe she knew this was coming up. Mm. All right, here's a story in Will Sasso. So they did the deal with Mad TV. Right. All right. And apparently the deal was Brett's going to do the thing on Mad TV and then Will Sasso is going to get a wrestling match on Nitro. And the match was going to be Will Sasso and Eric Bischoff oh boy. against Brett... I'm sorry, Brett Hart and Bischoff okay. against Will Sasso and Roddy Piper. That Tag match. Okay. okay. Brett and Bischoff versus Sasso and Piper. So that was supposed to be last week on the show. Mm-hmm. But they decided sounds terrible let's do brett and roddy piper <laughs> will sasso will get involved cost brett hart the match okay that's what they did so then mad tv was furious you said we'd have a fucking match this was not a match so they basically demanded they get their match and so wcw made brett hart will sasso okay now having seen this match there's no way that bischoff and brett hart versus sasso and piper would have been better than this match this was the right call. Fair enough. Right? Yeah. It was It was much, much, much better than I was expecting. So let's just break it down from the beginning. Brett comes out, and then Will Sasso comes out, accompanied by Deborah Wilson. Yes. Another Mad TV star who comes out. She's got like a single strap top. Yes. And she's dancing like crazy. And how her other boob didn't bounce out, I have no idea. I have she, no uh, idea. She must have been unemployed because there was no visual means of support. Aha. So all I could think was... <laughs> All I could think was, Brett's from the old school. There's got to be a part of him that wants to protect the business and just beat the holy hell out of this guy. Of course. And then the bell rang, and he beat the holy hell out of the guy. 
And to his credit, Will Sasso was clearly a wrestling fan. Yeah. Sure. He took great bumps. Absolutely. He sold better than like half of NXT. Uh-huh. He just took a fucking beating all over the place. Brett did not take one thing from Will Sasso. No. Not one thing. He didn't get slapped. Nope. He didn't take anything he from this guy. He didn't even like miss a clothesline. Nope. <laughs> Everything in this match was Brett succeeding on offense, and then in the end he won. Yep. He stopped in the middle to sit down on a chair in the ring and drink some water. He he I credit both guys for this. They didn't pretend this was a fair fight. No. This was a fucking fat comedian having a match with a multi time world champion. He should get his ass kicked from Bell to Bell, and he did. When Will Sasso took bumps, they were like the hardest bumps you've ever seen. He went out, yeah, they don't don't take bumps he like this. He did not go down easy. It was just splat Brett, every time. Brett punched he was him on the 500 floor. pounds. Yeah, Brett punched Can't him on the go floor down and he went down hard. Uh, that hurt. So Brett goes to use a chair, but Debra uh, Wilson is there to take the chair away. Right. So the ref takes Brett away, and then Debra Wilson turns on Will Sasso because everything has to be a swerve, and she's whacking him with a chair. Again, I have no idea how her boob stayed in. And then Brett immediately threw Will Sasso in and won with a sharpshooter. Yeah. There was no possible way this could have been any better. And you know what? Everybody was making fun of her chair shots, but it was really only the last one that was bad. The yeah. first two weren't bad. She, had two. she waffled that guy. Yeah. He said, I'm going to feed you my 500-pound back. She said, I will take that. This was way better than the Hoovy match. <laughs> it was. Yes. Yeah. No, right? you're right. No, you're fact- It's better than most of the matches. It was better than show. most of the matches on the show. It was yeah. the second best match on the show. Okay, third. The NWO arrived at the building. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, their vehicle arrives. Now Tony can see the vehicle. Right. But he doesn't know what else is going on. Why this? So, they come out and they're wearing masks. They're coming through the crowd. And Tony Schiavone goes, I don't know, fans. I don't know why they're coming out in masks. Fans have no idea. Everybody hits a ring, okay? They're criminals. <laughs> <laughs> they just... Gave Ric Flair a gang beating in a field and left him for dead. While masked. Now, it is Florida. I think it's still illegal there. They get in the ring, and what's the first thing they do? They take their fucking mask <laughs> Yeah. Off. Mm-hmm. Okay, everybody except the smartest guy in wrestling, Hulk Hogan. He leaves his mask on. Now, of course, he starts cutting a promo. Cutting a Hulk Hogan promo. And then he pretty much admits, I'm Hulk Hogan. And then it's like, ah, fuck it. So he takes his mask He's off. <laughs> They're all unmasked. Starts cutting this promo about... The flare match at Super Brawl, and he sends everyone to the back. Yep, and he says, "I can't wait till Super Brawl. I'm gonna give Ric Flair a match tonight. If sure. he can answer my ten count, he'll get a World Champ- Championship match right here." The fans are all excited. The announcers are all excited, and Hogan starts to count, and he gets to eight. And of course, his you know, he he knows that Ric Flair is dead in the field somewhere. So, much to his surprise, somebody comes out. It's not Ric Flair, but it is Roddy Piper. And the first thing Roddy Piper says is, I saw what you did to Flair. How? We found the one guy, the one guy on Nitro who actually watches Nitro. But what was funny was he did say, I saw what you did to Flair. But then I think he realized that he wasn't supposed to know what he did to Flair because then he changed his story and goes, Flair's busy. He did say that later too. So if you know what happened to him, shouldn't you send help? Right? Should. I, it'd be the decent thing to do. Do you also mention he called Hulk Hogan Baldy? Yeah. Did you also mention that Hogan <laughs> accused Ric Flair of covering up his gray in the back? Yes. <laughs> old men making fun of each other the, for being old is funny. The man whose hair has been running away from his face for ten years is making fun of a little gray. Yeah. Well, he brought that up. Maybe that's why Piper went ahead and called him Baldy. Maybe so. So. Anyway, Piper did say Flair is busy, by which I I assume he meant he's busy gasping for breath somewhere. He's busy. He's fighting for his life in a field of dirt. That is busy. That's very busy. He has more important things to do. Sure. I am still an active commissioner. I book myself in a world championship match against you right now. What a dick. I mean, think about this, actually. I didn't even think about this till just now. He knows that they almost killed Flair and left him for dead. Yes. Flair's supposed to get a title match on Sunday. Uh-huh. So instead of calling for help, this fucking guy swooped in yes. and took his title match. That's yes. what happened. He's a heel. I didn't even think about that till just now. Did we mention what a terrible television show this it's is? It's horrible. It's just the worst. And now, granted, the- their match was okay. It was the best you could get from two L- Literally. Guys. I've seen a lot of these guys' matches. 
age in a cage, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> as far as like a Roddy Piper, Ric Flair, or Hulk Hogan match, you could not have had a better one at in, this time. In 1999. In 1999. This was, this was literally the absolute best possible match they could have had together. Yes. It could not have been better. No. What could it have sucked. been better is when Roddy decided he was going to powerbomb, or he was going to pick up Hulk Hogan for a pile driver, but Hulk Hogan did not want to take said pile driver, yes. so he slumped him. down to his knees, and Roddy rode down to the ground with his knees. He very gently, it was like they're, they're, I thought it was a pedigree, but regardless, sure. Piper's I'm, standing up, and he's got Hogan's head between his legs, and then Piper slowly kneels to the ground so as prote to protect his opponent, and then once they're down there, he starts humping the back of Hulk Hogan's head. This happened. Yeah. Let me tell you something, Vinny. Okay? If I'm wrestling a guy who just got a new hip and he wants to pile drive me, I would prefer <laughs> he humped to the back of my head. Oh, sure. Than try to pile drive me with a fake hip. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm he made the right decision. I'm writing here. all of this down. I'm with you on that one. It's on tape. So they're doing this match. I stand by this. It's mostly them just taking turns whipping each other with Hogan's weightlifting belt. And then Piper hooks a sleeper, and Scott Hall attacks with a taser for the DQ. Sweet finish. Sure. <laughs> the NWO beats up Piper for like an hour. Literally like 10 minutes. And then Hall put on Piper's kilt and did a curtsy, which was funny. Yes. That, by the way, was the build to Scott Hall, Roddy Piper at the pay-per-view. So Arn and Disco are doing a way better job building up their match is not going to take place than these guys here. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, we're back in the woods. They yes. left the cameraman for dead so with Ric Flair. <laughs> I didn't. I. It's I didn't describe this in great detail, so you all understand how stupid this is. All right, there's a camera at ground level. It's looking at Ric Flair's prone body, and then right behind Ric Flair, a truck comes up with its headlights pointed right at the camera. Now, my thought was, in fact, they dropped the camera on the ground and forgot it there. Oh, you were wrong. So, this guy, and that's all he is. He's a guy, a fella, some Florida man. Florida man gets out of his truck and starts to help Ric Flair to his feet. And at this point, the cameraman stands up. So this cameraman, instead of calling for help for Ric Flair or get, just calling an Uber to get himself home, he just keeps on filming. I know there was no Uber in 1999. So I'm a stickler for logic, Vinny. He keeps, <laughs> he keeps on filming as Florida man throws Ric Flair into his pickup truck, his flatbed truck, as Tony later called it. Yeah, Tony was very specific. That's not he was a pickup like, truck. Yeah, it's not a pickup, it's a flatbed. Yeah. So Florida Man and Ric Flair and the flatbed truck all drive away, and this poor cameraman is now just alone in the woods. Yes. I like to think that he was also down, but, you know, he woke up when the truck showed up, so he documented this. Hmm. And presumably they came back to get him because, you know. And no questions they by the guy in the no, truck. No, the guy in the truck didn't ask, hey, what's going on? What? Okay, hey, cameraman, what happened to Mr. Flair here? If Nothing. we... If we believe that he saw this cameraman, or if we believe that this was all a TV show and it was, you know, they don't have the, uh, they're not breaking the fourth wall so you can see the camer cameraman. Either way, a random guy in a random truck drives down a random field, sees a random guy. It turns out to be Ric Flair, and his response is to just load him in the truck and hit the road. Maybe he thought the cameraman was the attacker. I had to get away. Yeah. <laughs> so he left him there. I don't know. Who cares? We then got a notice from Scott Steiner's lawyer. This was great. It was? I think so. <laughs> Just the audacity. I of... was trying to keep up with what he was saying. I talk fast. I know I talk too fast. I could not keep up with the, the what audacity this guy was saying. of of Scott Steiner actually doing this is what it was what humored me. All you need to know is his lawyer said that Steiner was filing a civil suit against DDP over the attack yes. last week. Paige did attack him first. That's true. That's why he's filing suit. Yes. It's not his fault that she flew out of the car. He, she should have buckled up. He is claiming that he suffered permanent injuries in this attack from Diamond Dallas Page and is suing for, uh, what is it? I forget the exact words, it was like upwards of a million dollars. Mm. Something like that. Man. said one million dollars. Well, I guess that's it then. Mm -hmm. And he says, Paige, by the way, is also facing felony charges in a 15-year sentence. Really? You can do that? <laughs> You can sue a guy to send him to jail? He attacked him. He, uh, two wrestlers got in a fight in a wrestling arena, and he's facing 15 years. Well, if Arn can get arrested, maybe Paige can too. Hmm. Had a Lex, uh, Lex Luger Elizabeth video package recapping Lex's match against Conan. Then a U.S. title video package, which was funny because the champion was just out there. 
And then the other tag team losers bracket match. Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko versus Mike Enos and Scotty Riggs. How do you have two matches in the losers bracket? It's double elimination. Who cares? They, 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 they booked I'm just po- sickened. They they scheduled it very badly, Brian. Yes. This match went forever. So Mike Enos and Scotty Riggs, one half of the Beverly Brothers, one half of the American Males. And they come out here. They're both wearing just plain black gear, plain black hair. The two most generic human beings you've ever seen. And they go in this match. Nobody cared. He's already seen Mike Malenko and Benoit wrestle. And in the middle of this boring match, they go to commercial. But first. But first. Instead of going to the commercial break directly, we go back to Florida Man. Who now... He's at a gas station. Checking the engine. Is that... I guess. Yeah, he the, was, the, he was the low. Hood's up. He was looking under the hood. He's low on oil. He's spraying water randomly. He's, he was over his his, his radiator was overheating. I guess. Well, I'm not a car guy. Very heavy. So, this, hot in Florida. It is hot in Florida, even in February. Sure. So he stops watering the engine, lowers the hood. He gets back in his truck. Now the camera. <clears throat> there's my voice getting angry about this. The cameraman pans around to the side of the truck. So we're now looking through the passenger window. Mm-hmm. And Flair is groggy now. He's demanding, take me to the building. Take me to the fairgrounds. <laughs> take me to the fucking fairgrounds. Take me to the goddamn fair. Jesus. I want an elephant here. So <clears throat> the Florida man doesn't Are you going to make anything. it? I don't know. <laughs> Florida man gets in the truck. And they show the building behind him, which just says, Neon country in giant letters. And yeah. that right there. <laughs> neon that, cowboy. Was it cowboy? Yeah. Either way. That was the point where I just like, I, I sat up and screamed, what am I watching? What is this? What is going on? It's you're been watch- an hour now. You're watching Nitro. Did you not watch this when it first happened? I, it, it hit me all at once. Like, <laughs> Dude. I, I, I watched this kid and think, well, that was stupid and shitty. And I move on with my life. <laughs> this is like it, the, the outrageous horribleness of this TV program. It backed up and then just... There it was. Just how terrible this TV program was hit me all at once. Ric Flair is beaten up in a truck by some. He's being driven around by some random guy to the fairgrounds so he can get his revenge. And only I know this. No one else on the show does, except maybe Piper. Except he, except he forgot. And how did this cameraman get to the neon cowboy? I don't know. I told you they went back and got him. No, they did not. We didn't see it, but they did it. Obviously, that's the least of our problems here. So I. I I exploded in outrage about how terrible this was. They go to commercial and they come back. I forgot there was a match going on. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's still going on. Started an hour ago. <laughs> we did go for an hour more, and Benoit finally tapped out Riggs with a crossface. Let it be known that on February 15th of 1999, Chris Benoit was in two lengthy matches, and neither was worth watching. Well, let's be fair. If you want a good professional wrestling tag team match, this was it. It just was so out of place on this show. How could you possibly care? I don't know. Like, the work was fine. Ben was drenched in sweat afterwards. He's worked two times, worked his ass off both times. And again, this this is so nitpicky, but all of a sudden, Scotty Riggs' eye completely healed. Yes. yes. Good, no eye patch. Again, the least of our problems. Exactly. We cut to Florida man driving a truck for four seconds. <laughs> <laughs> He's on his way to the building. The, the fair. The cameraman got out of the truck, ran ahead to no. record. He, he wasn't like sitting on the fender. The so fresh? let's jump to this yeah. main event here. Sorry. What's the no, main no, event no, you no, asked? No, 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 we're not done yet. Oh, God. Tori Wilson, who cares? Tori Wilson, Wilson told you she was having fun. She knew you had to go talk to people. Okay. But, but maybe you could have more fun later. So listen, let's just cut to the chase. We're going to be here all night. They flew in Michael Buffer. It did. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yes. First off, I'm sure it wasn't cheap. No. He has to go first class. They paid this guy probably $15,000. Okay? He also, by the way, makes more than I do for the Brian Evans show. <laughs> they didn't even have a main event. No. no. They flew him in. They paid him. They put him on TV. They put him in the ring. He began his ring introductions. He asked us if we were ready. I was. He told us it was time to rumble. I was excited. And that was all he did because there was no main event match. And then he didn't even get to finish the announcement because Hall took the mic away from him. 
The only good thing about this is I'm not the biggest Michael Buffer fan, but he starts doing Let's Get Ready to Rumble. And it about get and let's get ready. Sure. They hit the Wolfpack music. And he scrunches up his face in confusion and looks to the back, but he does not stop his catchphrase. Mm-hmm. And he gets through the entire thing like a professional. Well, he gets paid per syllable. And then out comes Hogan and he tells him to hit the bricks. That was his entire role on this show. Money well spent. I want to know what the main event was supposed to be. Was that the Barbarian and Mang match? No. Against Horace and Brian Adams? Let's hope not. Anyway. So Hogan repeats his offer of giving Flair a title shot tonight if Flair can make it to the ring by a count of 20. Oh. They start to he count. He thinks he's in Japan. They start to count. The flatbed truck arrives. Flair is recovered to the point where he can walk, kinda, for a while. He uses an axe handle for a crutch. There's going to be a crutch and a weapon. He still can barely walk. The NWO is just howling with laughter as he's trying to get to the ring. Where did Florida man go? Who cares? Let's talk about Shivani. Where's the the story? Where, this guy came from out of nowhere. He dropped, dropped him off. off. He was the Uber driver. So Shivani has no... None of the announcers know what's going on. No. They just see a truck show up and Ric Flair stumbles out of it. And Tony Shivani, like... Just like he's calling the action, Flair just took a nosedive out of that truck. And then Bobby Heenan followed it up with... Has he been drinking? No, he goes, is he smashed? Is he smashed? Yes. Tony goes, Flair can barely stand, but he is coming to this pavilion here at the fair. Flair stumbles his ass to the ring forever. Now, when he finally gets to the ring, the horsemen come out to try and save him. Where were they when it took him five minutes to stumble his ass to the ring? Stumbles to the ring. He's rather bring the huge win over the Beverly Males. <laughs> Tony finally goes, some sort of severe beating or something. Look at his has face. It's happened here tonight. Look at his face. Some sort of severe beating or something has happened here tonight. I, in his defense, no one told him. No one told I'm him. Sure I'm in, not making fun of Tony. I'm, I'm making sure fun of how stupid this in is. In real life, no one told him what happened to Flair. Like, as a viewer, what are we supposed to be thinking? Why I, are the announcers gr- so stupid? <laughs> Where's my remote? <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> Fucking guy gets to the ring and gets beat up. That's the end of the show. Mm-hmm. That's what this happened. was so bad. <laughs> this was one of the worst... This is one of the worst television show episodes I've ever seen. Forget wrestling. Forget Nitro. And, and, I just want to remind everybody that the night before this aired, Vince McMahon and Stone Cold Steve Austin had a one-on-one match inside a steel cage. They did. Okay? Six days after this fucking show, this Ric Flair, fresh out of a turnip truck, (laughs) faced Hulk Hogan on pay-per-view, and WCW beat WWF in the buy rate war. Yeah. Huh. More people wanted to see this fucking match than Vince McMahon and Steve Austin. Now, with that said, this was the end. This was the end. Because everything goes off a cliff. I mean, it's been going off a cliff for a while, yeah. but like this was their last this is, great they this landed was their the bottom last of the cliff. great buy rate. And it all began to tumble from here. How the fuck did this beat Vince McMahon and Steve Austin in a cage? I don't even get it. But it did. Hogan and Flair. Brian, do you have my music ready? You know, I don't. Well, I'll do it anyway. I'll have to play something new, I guess, because I, I don't Should I wait or just anymore. continue? Well, you know... I don't really care. Go ahead and just play something. The finishes on this show were... something. There we go. This is the new contest music. I'm fine with that. The finishes on this show were... Pinfall after a ref distraction, a run-in, and a pipe in the ring. Clean pin in the longest trios match of all time. Clean submission. Another clean submission. DQ due to taser. A third clean submission. And then no match in the main event. Well, you know, to their credit, there is a finish on Raw that is dumber than everything on this show. Almost uh, always the finishes on Raw are stupider, I've noticed. No, but there there is an in, there is an incredible finish that is up there with a DQ and a no DQ match. But we'll <laughs> get to it. <laughs> 